Uh, it's time for another math easy solution. Turn discuss further into approximate integration and look at example three of the example series. And go over this example which states use the midpoint rule with n equals 10 to approximate the integral of this one integral from zero to one of e to the power of x uh, squared dx and then part b give an upper bound for the error involved in this approximation. And before I get to this, I just want to state like I showed in my earlier video or like I stated in my earlier video, this uh, function you can't actually integrate it. There's no actual uh, formula for it in an exact way. You probably need to use some sort of infinite series or whatnot to actually solve this exactly. So in this case, approximating is, is pretty much the only way we can uh, go about anyways. So that being said, let's go to part A. So this is the midpoint rule. So if we were to graph this function, let's call that uh, f of x. So we call this y. Let's go x. So when you plug in the zero inside, you have e to the zero, which is going to be, well, one. So the function looks something like this, and it just increases when you put a bigger, bigger number in terms of inside x. So it keeps going up and x, uh, up and up. This is going to be y equals two e to the x dx, so let's call it f of x as well. So we have, oops, we have this, and now it's from 0 to 1, so from this center point, we're approximating it from here. I just want to show how it looks visually. Now we're using the midpoint rule, and as I showed, well again, there's n equals 10, so we need to break this up into 10 sub intervals, call this 1, 2, 3, 4, five, let's one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, and here I just quickly fix these up. So these are 10 intervals and then, then you always go from the midpoint. So it looks something like this. You draw a rectangle across the midpoint. So you just go like this, etc. Keep going on and on. And then the last one, so it just becomes something like this. Or again, it's always the midpoint. Just assume we got we drew it correctly. And again, the del the distances here is delta x, and these ones all equal to well, it's going to be our the total distance divided by ten intervals. So there's going to be one minus zero over ten. That just equals to well, point one or one over ten. And now. So if we consider any random, the random part here, this one here as x i center point with a line above it, let's call the one in front of it x i, and then the one behind x i minus one. So well x i, that's just gonna be well the average of it, which is pretty much well x i equals two, x i plus x i minus one divided by two. So we're just averaging it out. For example, in this case we have x zero, yeah, so x0, this is equal to, well, 0. And then this part right here is x1. That equals to a distance of delta x, a point 0.1. So in between what we have is, is this point right here. We'll call this x1 uh, with, uh, with a line above. That just equals to, well, point 0.1 minus 0 divided by 2, point zero 0.05. So that's 0 0.05, and the distance across from here is delta x, and again, this is delta x, so it's always going to be added by 0.1. So at this point right here, we get x, uh, we'll call this x2 center point equals to 0 0.05 plus 0 0.1, 0.15. And again, the integral now is approximated by e x squared dx equals 2, or roughly equal to, We'll call this m and then 10 for midpoint approximation with, with 10 intervals. And this equals 2, like I showed. The summation from i equals to 1 up to uh, n, or which is 10 in this case. And that's going to be f of x i center point like that. And this always changes. So then this is going to be equal to, in our case, all oh, del delta x right here. So it's basically all the rectangles we add up. And each it's a base of the area of each rectangle added up. And now when we take this delta x out, it's always the same. So we have delta x times it by, well, f of uh, 0 0.05 plus f of 0 0.0, I mean 0.15, etc. We keep going on, 0.25 plus 
and then I'll just keep going dot 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 plus dot 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 we get all the way up to point I mean f of point so this goes one two three four five all the way to well nine uh, five because if you increase by point one one more you'll get well bigger than one which is what not what we're trying to get one is the highest and that's this last one right here this is x uh, 10 and then underline this equals 2.95 so we have this now we just add these up the point uh, delta x is point 1 times it by e to the point zero 0.05 squared plus e to the point zero point one five squared plus and then we get e to the point two five squared plus keep going on and on plus etc we get e to the point nine five squared right here and now when you plug this into into the calculator or in this case here I just put it made a quick Excel sheet there's our Delta there's our X values right here and then um, the F of X these are just exp this is how you write e to the X uh, you write exp or exp for exponent and then uh, equals well this to power uh, to squared each one squared sum this all up so sum and then times by point 0.1 you get uh, 1.460393 so this roughly equals to 1.460393 and it yeah, keeps going on and on this is the closest or this is enough decimal places that we need for our uh, example this is good enough and now to do part B which says give an upper bound for the error involved in this approximation so recall uh, from my earlier video on the error bounds, so I'll write that here. Recall basically the error bound for the midpoint rule is if you have a number such that the absolute value of the second derivative of f of x is well less than or equal to k, or k is greater than or equal to the second uh, derivative of f of f, f of x for the interval uh, for x is less than or equal to b, greater than or equal to a, and again this the formula was m n actually no it's error so the e e n so this is for i'll call this e m actually it's an e m so error midpoint rule absolute values less than equal to k times b minus a cubed over over 24 n squared so you can make sure to watch my early video on the error bounds to see how i got this so now if we have this part so we got to find k you could pick k anything that's greater than or equal to the second root of f of f of x but you could put infinity then that this still holds true but we don't want something that ridiculous like that we want the, the most accurate we can uh, get so what we'll do is pick the lowest k value that we can so we need to look at the derivative of the f of x or the second derivative of it so f of x right here equals to e x squared f prime of x equals 2 this is going to be well well the derivative of e to the power of anything is itself and then chain rule when you take the derivative of the inside here x squared that's just 2x so by chain rule that's this and now the second derivative well what we'll do here is using uh, the product rule this derivative of 2x is just 2 and e x squared plus now 2x and the derivative of ex squared which is just 2x ex squared times by 2x right here this equals 2 and taking out yeah I'll take out the like terms I'll take this out this 2 and this so we get these all out so we get 2 ex squared and then we have a 1 plus um, this is 2 2x so that's what we get here. So for the interval x is less than or equal to 1, yeah, 1 right here, and then greater than or equal to 0. As you can see here, when you plug in 0, if you plug in 0 here in f of uh, f double prime of x, so what we get here is f double prime of 0, that just equals 2, 2 times e to the 0, 1 plus uh, 0, so we get this is 1, this equals to 2. And now when we plug in 
for the uh, one part right here, f of f double prime of one equals to two times e to the one, and then one plus two. That just goes like that. That becomes three. Three times two is six. So we get six e, which is well greater than. Um, this is greater than f double prime of zero. And you could see here, any number from zero to one is gonna be, well, it's always positive, so it's always gonna be greater than, uh, yeah, there's nothing subtracting it, so it's gonna be greater than our uh, der second derivative at zero. So what we have is this right here uh, is gonna be less than or equal to six e and greater than or equal to two for x is less than or equal to one greater than or equal to zero. So we have this, so now we'll choose the biggest, uh, I'm the lowest k we can pick, and that's this right here. So choose k equals to six e, and then what this means now is that six e, again, be six e because it's greater than or equal to the absolute value, of the second root of, of here. And this one, you can put the second um, absolute value of it, it's still gonna hold true, because in our case, this, this function is always positive when x is positive. So we pick 6e, so our uh, error bound right here, em, is less than or equal to 6e, and then b minus a, that's just, well, this is our a, this is our b. So one minus zero, power of three, divided by 24n, which is 10 squared. So what we get, this is this goes to 100. 6 divided by 24, this equals to e. I'll put an e right here. This, this you could simplify, this is just one, 1 over 4, because 6 times 4 is 24. This right here, I'll just do that like this. This equals to 6 times 4, so the 6 is cancel. So what we're left with is 4 times 100 which equals to e over 400. So this error is less than or equal to e divided by, actually this is 400, not 100. Yeah, e divided by 400. And now if you plug this into the calculator, and here since I already have this Excel file open, let's use this, write exp, and then I'll just put a one here, that's just e to the one divided by 400. That equals 0 0.0068, we'll round it up to that. So basically what we have is, see yeah, and writing this out, we get roughly equal to 0 0.0068. So what, what this means is, uh, put this all together, we have absolute value em is less than or equal to, yeah, less than or equal to uh, 0 0.0068, uh, yeah, so this is the error bound here. This means that our estimate for n equals 10 is accurate to at least within this 0 0.0068. And here's some uh, useful notes here. Uh, basically, error estimates are upper bounds for the error. So this is the max error that we can guarantee to uh, be within. So it'll be less than this uh, as a worst case. So basically, this gives uh, theoretical worst case scenarios, like uh, again, like I showed in my earlier videos. And actually, the actual error in this case turns out to be about 0 0.0023, which is, again, well, less than our worst case, which is about three times this uh, actual error. Anyways, that's all for today. Hopefully, you'll learn from this uh, quick example. And uh, like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below. And thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another math easy solution.